Hey folks, the Field and Garden Podcast is honored to be partnering with the Growing for Market magazine. They have been publishing practical ideas and information for direct market flower and vegetable growers for over 31 years. All the articles are written by farmers who get their hands dirty and know what they're doing. The magazine is still on the same mission as when the Flower Farmer book author Lynn Bozinski founded this magazine back in 1992 to connect growers with the best ideas from other growers. There is dedicated flower content in every magazine. A decade's worth of back issues and over 1,600 archived articles from writers like Aaron Benzenkang, Gretel Adams, Pamela and Frank Arnowski, and Jonathan and Megan Leese, all available on the website. With 10 new issues every year available on paper, digital, or both, you're guaranteed to find something to fine tune your farm and growing for market. So if you do farmer's markets, CSA, farm stands, pick your own florist sales, or wholesaling, whether you're a commercial grower or you just want to grow like one, subscribe to Growing for Market for the nitty gritty details of growing, marketing, and the business of local farming. And I have a special offer for you. Use the coupon code WORKSHOP to get 25% off any subscription to the original Farmer to Farmer magazine at growingformarket.com. Hey friends, welcome back to another Field and Garden podcast. It is your friend and host, Lisa Mason Ziegler, and I am pretty stoked to talk to you about what I need to talk about today. So today's podcast topic um, is something that I am literally going through right now. So this is October, and the name of this podcast is Trust the Process, and i Frankly, friends, I'm running a little low on it right now. And um, what made me think to talk about this, I'm suffering from that running low, right? But I have this little piece of paper. I actually have about four pieces of little paper on my desk at the warehouse in my business office folded that sit up so that I they're just there at the base of my big um, desktop screen monitor, right? And one of them is trust the process. And that is a phrase that a business person um, that um, I've watched on TV and um, he does some, it's the um, Marcus, I cannot even remember the name of what the show was. Um, But anyway, he's um, a business guy that did a reality business show. And while some of it was a little crazy, I picked up a lot of great business-related tidbits from him, and trust the process was one of them. But what does that mean, right? So, but before we jump into this, friends, if you're new here, welcome. I am so glad you're here. Um, I am, let's see, I am a little, I have a little flower farm located in the middle of the city in southeastern Virginia. I started farming back in 1998, and my farm just hit the ground running, um, and it has snowballed into a whole lot of other things. But friends, I say that, and people think, oh my gosh, how great for you. You're so successful. Folks, let me tell you, what we're going to talk about today, I have faced every day just about as is the normal. This is the way it's supposed to be. That's that's the bottom line. In case I forget to say that at the end, everything I'm going to talk about today is the process that you go go through over and over and over again as you develop and change, whether it's your business, your life, or whatever it is, a project you're doing. So trust the process means... To learn the steps and just keep up and 
do keep getting up and doing them over and over again, knowing that you're doing the right thing and that ultimately it's going to jiggy out. It's not that simple, but that's kind of what happens. It's like, first off, you don't do it right every time. Timing's not always right. You don't have all the pieces. And then all of a sudden, one day, boom, it happens. Um, totally off subject, but one of the things that I've learned that that is just so true on, if you're trying to market your business on social media and you you know you spend way too much time making a post, whether it's a reel or whatever it is you're doing, and you post it and then it bombs, right? Um, and no longer is it, that is not an indication of whether your post was good, true, or helpful. You know, it's like, It has to fit the process of the social media platform. So one of the things that's helping me to trust the process more is my methodology on social media. We've kind of changed it in the last few months, and it's not completely changed yet. If you keep an eye on us, you'll kind of watch it, is you have to trust the process and invest more. And that means we are posting more. So if you, you know, were on a journey to make the best biscuit ever, and you made them once and they flopped, would you never try again? No, you'd keep making the biscuits and trying to perfect it and figure it out. If you want to ultimately have a great biscuit, right? That's the difference. It's what you're, whether you have the umph to keep going, and that's very much the same in business. So for me on social media, I have learned you have to post more quantity to get good results. You're not going to post one superstar post a day, which will, you know, because what's the goal? To stimulate conversation, um, to get views, to get likes. And when you stimulate conversation and get likes, that stimulates more views. So what I'm just saying is that, you know, this is, you've got to learn the steps and then do them. And so these steps that I'm following today were not the same steps I was following last year. And that's the hard part, y'all. That's the really hard part is that the game is constantly changing and you have to be um, open-minded, open-eared, and then learn as best you can what the steps are and just keep doing them over and over and totally expecting that you're going to fail more than you're going to win, right? You're going to do it a thousand times and three times may be the home run. But those other, you know, 997 times, you got either so-so or bombs. But that's what you're supposed to happen. So learning the steps. And these are things um, that Literally, Suzanne and I were together. That's my sister. Here on the farm, we spend Wednesdays um, for she and I to be here. We do a multitude of different things to create content, do video and take pictures, um, rearrange, just do things that we do best together. We kind of brainstorm. And so yesterday, because of the transitions in business that always happen, and we're in the midst of big ones in our business. Um, And so she and I were kind of um, just reminiscing about something, about a, a resource that we used to have for business that we no longer have. And um, so it got me to thinking about, so how does one learn these steps, Right and keep doing them. Well, what I do is um, try to find a teacher. You know, that can be um, a multitude of different levels. The one thing I will say to you is when you want to learn from somebody, I mean, for lack of a better word, a mentor type person, whether you actually have contact with them or not, um, you know, we have access to everybody, right? Through social. um, But to stick with those people that are actually 
successful. There are a lot of people out there with a lot of great ideas and bells and whistles that have actually um, not really been doing it. And that's kind of like how you know how you hear um, people talk about, yeah, some engineer sitting, sitting in an office somewhere that's never put anything together drew the plans for this you know, the instructions on a product you buy and the instructions make absolutely no sense. It's obvious that the person that wrote it never put the product together, right? That is so common, y'all. So common. But unfortunately, on social media, anybody can make themselves look that way. So I'm just saying that when you seek out that person to kind of follow and learn from that you kind of, you got to do a little vetting and that's totally up to you. The other thing that um, we look to um, is networking with like-minded people. This does not mean, because how can I say this? So there are many groups out there. Some of them are heavily saturated in experienced, serious, professional people. That's what you're looking for. Then there's groups that are um, more newbies. There's nothing wrong with that group. I'm just saying that's not where you go to learn. To waste your air, your brain space, your your bandwidth in a group like that asking questions about how you should do something to be innocently misled oftentimes is not what I'm talking about. That's not a teacher-mentor kind of situation. However, those groups can be fun, but professionally, that's not what I'm talking about. So networking in groups of like-minded people with the same goal of building a professional business, which means, I mean, for me, this is one of the things Susie Q and I talked about yesterday. It's like, I wish that everybody talked in bullets. Just tell me the facts. When you are when you have so much to do all the time in business, it's like you don't want to, you don't have room for the backstory or the thoughts or I wonder if, just because you have to just take care of so much stuff, right? Um, so that is the thought on networking. But here's what we really talked about yesterday, and Suzanne actually went online and searched around for a while. So when I say organizations, I'm talking about wonderful, supportive business organizations like the Association Especially Cut Flower Growers. Um, That's the ASCFG. They are 100% an educational organization that their dedication is to help and promote and support domestic cut flower growers, wherever you are in the world, to give those resources, education, so forth and so on. What we were talking about yesterday is we used to have, the organization was not nearly as powerful as the ASCFG, meaning it just, it kind of went away, which is a sign that it wasn't a healthy organization. Um, It was an organization, um, which I'm not even going to say what the name of it was, that um, business owners that owned companies um, that were gardening-related mail-order catalog. You know, that's how old it was. Back, that's kind of what part of the name was. Um, And it was, Suzanne and I were able to go to two meetings, once-a-year meetings, um, and network and meet other people that were doing the same type of business that we were. And, oh, my gosh, it was so valuable. Well, it went under during the pandemic, which is kind of crazy to me because gardening exploded during the pandemic. Anyway, I wasn't involved enough in the organization to know what the whole situation was, but Suzanne and I were discussing yesterday how we are really suffering um, because of that lack of that need of how powerful it was to be amongst other people facing the same challenges that we were facing, um, that we're facing, and questions. I mean, how great is it to be in a closed Facebook community that is all the people that are doing what you're doing or 
been doing it or just starting or, you know, in the trenches and you can pop in there and ask a question and you normally get an answer within 24 hours over something that there is nowhere else that you can ask. So finding a mentor teacher, networking with groups that can actually push you forward. The fun groups are fine, but don't work with them during the business day. And then organization with um, these private communities, which are so supportive. And oh my gosh, y'all, I mean, it is just so great to have a group to go in and say, oh my gosh, this just happened to me and I'm about to pull my hair out. And somebody chimes in and said, hey, listen, that happened to us two years ago and this is what we did. Don't even worry about it or take these steps or, oh my gosh, um, let me go look up what we did. You know what I mean? It's just amazing. So trust the process, but you need to have support in the process and learn the process and just keep getting it um, and doing it over and over. And so why is this so fresh for me? Friends, so this is in October of 2023 when we're, um, when I'm recording this, or actually it's actually the end of September. Um, and Right now, for me, it is so fresh and in the front of my mind because there are so many moving parts. So I'll just lament for a minute and tell you um, all the things that are grabbing me right now. First off, the farm is undergoing a major gardening revamp. We are still moving as we have been for three years, moving from a high production commercial flower farm, which we've been doing for the past two decades, um, to a smaller model for our education, um, educational garden, which is used to support all these resources that we're providing, right? And all these courses and imaging and videoing and just everything. Anyway, it's a totally, it's like going back to our roots. And it's so funny that, you know, when I say that, I think of instantly Lynn Bozinski. If you have not read the Flower Farmer book, which is the book that most flower farmers that started beyond 10 years ago, that was the only resource we really had. Lynn started it all for all of us. And she and I have become friends. It's like, y'all, it's like being friends with Mitt Jagger, if you ask me. Anyway, I can remember talking to Lynn um, about, I don't remember what the actual issue was, but she talked about how she had evolved all the way through the process, and that's what's happening to me. You start out, you start small, you build your business, you go and do all these different things, then you find kind of what makes you the happiest that you can do in with your resources and that is profitable. And then you kind of come off of that and think, I can do this much smaller, much better, still produce a lot and don't have to be all involved in all that crazy stuff I used to do. That's kind of where I am. Um, Bobo and I were just remarking that, remarking that, um, how people look at how neat and tidy and how much we produce from our farm friends we work two days for about six to seven hours on our farm out in garden work um, and maintain what we do. And it's pretty crazy, but it's because of all these years of learning the ins and outs, right? So the farm is in a major brain shift, right? And um, the other thing is that most people don't know is my house has been under construction for the last 13 months. That's enough to make anybody crazy. So that's gobbled up some of my um, trust or some of my just, I'm just low, running low, right? Then, of course, um, we are preparing to move our fulfillment center for our online garden shop to a new facility, which is just across the street from the old facility. But it has to have, it had to have major, um, not major, a lot of work done, which sounds so simple and easy when you're not having to do it and we're doing it and it's going wonderfully. But I'm telling you, y'all, I thought I was going to have like a brain explosion last week. If one more person asked me, where should this light switch go? Where do you need internet hardwire? Um, even though there's plans for all that. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like I've just got a little 
dog nipping at my heels all the time over that. And then, of course, there's the move. We have to move across the street. Where does everything go? The girls are, um, you know, stepping up and take leadership and all that, but they still look to me to give the nod, right? And then we have major product development going on. Um, And remember, I also have a new book coming out, and that's like in the last days of going to the printer, which means all kinds of crazy things are being brought up. And I won't even go there until the days are done. And um, it's all good. And I totally, it's the same process that had used to happen to us when we were printing a catalog. Um, and which, no, we do not print a catalog anymore, y'all. Um, the, you know, you work on it for four months. And then as the print date draws nearer, All of a sudden, these questions come up that you think, oh, why didn't we think about doing that? Oh, maybe we should do it this way. Well, that's the very same thing that's happening with my book. And I'm just trying to hold my ground and be a pro and, you know, go with the flow. Anyway, so we have all kinds of product development, research and development that's just really ramped up right now. Then we have business strategy, right? I mean, this move across the street is really um, just giving our, it's like loosening your belt, y'all. We have been a size 16 business wearing a pair of size eight britches for three years. And so you can imagine what those good stuff, but somebody has to figure it all out, stuff goes. So, I am, um, you know, is, I hope I'm giving you the sample of how business is always changing. And it doesn't matter whether you have a little, my, my niece's business, she's a baker. That is constantly changing, constantly changing. She might not be facing what she thinks are these big challenges, but she certainly chase, um, is facing big challenges for her business, for where she is. That's kind of my point, y'all. It always is changing. Always changing, which means always new stuff, which challenges us. And frankly, I think October is a scary month, but it's scary for us for a very different reason. And I'm just running a little low. And talking to you about it is helping me. Because, friends, if I forget to say it again, all of this is normal and necessary in business. Because if you're not constantly pushing out a little bit, doing new things, getting a little scared, then your business is going to become stagnant. So um, so I've often said in the past that I think that everybody should be a little scared every day. And because I think that is good for us, um, and I forget who said it. I don't know who said that, Miss Roosevelt or somebody. Um, but I believe in being a little scared is good. If you're not scared, you're not growing. So that's just something. If you're comfy and cozy, go for it. But there are greener pastures for you if you want them. Um, and so just the reminder that that is why in my opinion, you have to have, to to succeed and sleep at night anyway, you have to have a mentor or someone to actually lean on. And for me, um, the number one person for me is Stevie. Stevie's my husband. Um, He and his family own a big family business that's over 50 years old. And Stevie has been in the business for 40 years. And it's a plumbing company, not the same as mine, but let me just tell you, they go through the same things that we were just talking about. Constant changing and issues. And having, I mean, sometimes at the dinner table, this might not surprise y'all, he doesn't get a, he doesn't even need to say a word. I just sit down and start gushing, kind of like I am right now. And after I'm done, he'll say, we, uh, what else would you expect but to be facing that problem? Because you're doing this, you're doing exactly the right thing. Or just give it time. 
or try this. And it's like, y'all, the floodgate of relief just overcomes me. Having someone to talk to, a mentor, a teacher. I happen to be married to a business person. So we have that. And for me, another part of that is my, if without my faith, I would not be here talking to you today. I would not be where I am now. So that is the anchor that gets me through all of this. Um, And the other part of this for me as a business person is I have such stellar people on my team at the Gardener's Workshop. Um, You know, sitting down yesterday, I had a new idea and I sat Suzanne down and said, before we do anything else, I need to run this by you. And if you think it's feasible, right thing, you never know if it's the right thing to you do it, but do you think this is a good way to go? Suzanne, my sister, has been with me since the beginning. She has been through all the ebb and flow, building this farm, building the gardener's workshop, building our online course platform, building our store. You know what I mean? She has been through it all. So she's a great, she's my lightning rod. So I told her my idea and I said, and if you agree with me, then we'll bring Kelly in on this conversation. So I talked to Suzanne and she said, I'm not sure that all of your pieces are exactly right, but I definitely think that's something that we need to try. So then I called Kelly Kelly is my niece who's been around for about almost um, a decade and a half with us. She leads our, uh, manages our courses, our website, our IT, and just kind of is moving up the ranks in the leadership of the gardeners, of leading the gardeners workshop in many directions. So I called Kelly, who really doesn't um, work on Wednesdays, Um, but I called her and I said, this is what I'm thinking. She had her two cents, kind of like what Suzanne's were. And I said, all right, let me bring the next person in. And then this coming Monday, we will discuss it further. All of us are chewing on it. That is so valuable, y'all, to build a team of people. Um, And, you know, a small business person, they may not all be your employees. This is a great, it's like I know that um, Daniel of Petal Pickers down in South Carolina I met Daniel. He became one of my students, ended up taking all of our courses. Um, So we have become great friends through the years. Down there where he is in Greenville, um, they have created a flower farming group. So I think people are surprised that people, professional business people, get together and share their secret sauce. And they do do that. We do do that, right? That's one of the greatest things about flower farmers. But it's about so much more than that. It is the support. It's the commiserating. It's the, oh my gosh, this just happened to me. And somebody may not solve your problem, but just sharing it or hearing that other people have been through it. You know, how great would it be to be able to talk to other people that face hurricanes on a regular basis? What is their process? How do you get through it? What do you do when that you get, you know, wiped out? Um, there's just so much to a professional networking group like they have um, kind of got started down there. And I know that there's many of those all over. I am just so aware of Daniel's because of our friendship um, personally as well as professionally. Um, so friends, I am here to tell you, um, having a mentor to lean on um, is priceless And that mentor can be in so many different levels, whether it's a teacher, whether it's, um, you know, your, your husband that's a business person or someone in your family, or it's your faith, which the faith gives you the guts to do it, right? Because you know, somebody's got your back no matter what, um, or a team member. I can't underestimate how Trust in the process that you learn from others that may not know all the answers, but they have the same point as you. You know, they have the same goal in mind, and there's just so much value in that, um, that you have that place to go for reassurance, um, because just hearing that this is the way to go, or this is what I did, 
or I've been through that and I totally, you have my sympathies. You know, just hearing that somebody else has suffered quite as much as you have really, really helps. Um, And, you know, I don't know what you would classify me as or, you know, but I'm that, other than a little crazy, right? Um, But I'm that person that prepares for the worst and prays for the best. And I think in the beginning of my business walk, that started because I do live where hurricanes come. And I learned that preparing my garden when we are really set up for a direct hit can really help me salvage some maybe or at least minimize my losses. And that actually was successful a couple of times. So I learned the value of preparing. And um, I've applied that through all levels you know, of my business. And y'all, it's just what gets me through my work days. And it makes me sleep at night. Having a backup plan um, is a big thing for me. That's the only way I can juggle all these things is that I don't leave a lot of things. There's a lot of things that are out of our control, right? As flower farmers, as farmers in general, the weather, you have no control over that. You can only put in place steps to take, to manage, and come out the best you can. Um, And it's the same in business. Some things you just cannot control, but there are a lot of things you can do um, to help guide the outcome, or at least what the impact is on you and your business. So that little piece of paper on my desk brings me back You know, so I'll tell you, so this today is Thursday. I typically go to the um, warehouse, the fulfillment center on one day a week. It was Tuesday this week to, you know, do business work, paperwork all day long, um, help support the leadership there and whatever they need my help on, um, talk to people, have lunch with the staff. You know what I mean? Do touch base. And this week was, I went in there a bit wired and walking in and sitting down um, and seeing that little paper that says, trust the process. Literally, I just sat there for a moment and thought, oh yeah, trust the process. This too will pass. How many times have I faced what I thought were impassable mountains in business, and I can't even remember what they are now, you know? And That just made me think of, and I'll wrap this up right here. Our dad, um, my dad Randall, had a thing when we were growing up. If we came to him and wanted something that was a pretty significant request, um, I can think of it, remember it distinctly when I wanted a kitten. Um, And we weren't really an animal family um, up to that point. I wanted a kitten, and then the next thing that I remember is I wanted a big aquarium, like I was a teenager. The kitten came earlier. I was a preteen, probably. Um, And then when I started, my very first job was working at Rose's department store when I was 16. I had just gotten my license. I was a checker. That would be like the Kmart or the Walmart version back then. Um, And they had a pet department. That's when they, back when they used to do that. And they had aquariums there. And I was just so intrigued. And then there was also an aquarium store in that same shopping center, you know, big stuff. Anyway, so my dad had this little basic rule that he followed whenever we came to him with those kinds of questions. He'd listen to you, you know, go on and on, as you can imagine I would, um, about selling, pitching my case And he would say, okay, wait 30 days. And if you want it as bad then as you do right now, we'll do it. Nine out of 10 times, all the things that I wanted, I never thought about again. Right? And I can remember coming home from school, from middle school, and finding a picture of a kitten that he had taped on my bedroom door because it had been 30 days and I still wanted the kitten, and we got a cat. Um, But what I want to say is it seems unpassable when you're facing that mountain with a 
2,000 pound boulder that only you seem to be behind it to push up the mountain. But friends, when you pile the people up behind you, whether it's your husband, your staff, certainly your faith, um, networking, an organization, a private professional Facebook group that you're in, um, like one of our school groups or the ASCFG group, when you put all that behind the boulder, all of a sudden it is not quite so hard to push. And it just affirms, trust the process, friends. So friends, if you want to learn more about the Gardener's Workshop, explore our Flower Farm and School series, online courses, um, and so much more. We have so many great instructors sharing their firsthand experiences um, from a floral designer that has only bought local her entire business career, teaches you how to sell to florist, preparing floor to sell to florist, or our collectives course with Amelia Ilo, who owns Rooted Farmer, which is the platform that is connecting farmers to buyers all over the country. It is phenomenal. And Amelia prepares you of how to become a part of that, how to engage with people. So friends, we have a lot over there. I invite you to go over and check it out and sign up for our farm news so you don't miss out on anything. And until we meet again, friends, ciao.